that's all I'm stick here. Uh, first thing you'll notice, woo, chop the top. <laughs> Thanks to my wife. Uh, saved some money for some comic books and uh, got her to cut my hair. Uh, I'm really poor. <laughs> Anyways, uh, also I'm really tired and I'm kind of hacking right now. I got something tickling my throat. <clears throat> I'm working uh, night shift, so um, yeah, my uh, <clears throat> days are kind of off right now. But anyways, <clears throat> this video, what I wanted to talk to you guys quickly about and, and just share this information with you and uh, I want to know what your thoughts are afterwards. I was going to do a little graphs and charts, but I figured, yeah, I'm, I'm too tired for that today. <laughs> yeah, I'll keep a graphs and charts for another day. Uh, but anyways, what I'm talking about is the comic book uh, industry st statistics. And uh, this is the thing I wanted, uh, wanted to look at <clears throat> as soon as they came in. Of course, me, you know, more into Marvel. Um, I really wanted to... Of course, have Marvel win. <laughs> Still, despite uh, uh, DC's good, uh, um, you know, business plan for the month of September, sort of. Um, so yes, DC did win. Um, they did come out on top a little bit. <clears throat> Not as big as they probably should have, though. So I just want to share with some of the numbers uh, with you guys and see what you guys think. Um, and. Uh, I don't know, I was going to say something else. <coughs> but, uh, let me first say for September, uh, the top, this is all information according to Diamond Comics distributors, by the way. <coughs> and the number one selling comic book for August um, is Batman number one. Uh, I wish I could have gotten the variant cover, although I really like Capallo's artwork. This particular cover by Capallo seems to, I don't know, not like a cover, just like a uh, oversized comic book panel. <coughs> but anyways, yeah, Batman number one was, according to them, the highest selling uh, comic book for September. So, um, I think it has a lot to do, of course, Batman is a big um, character in the DC, but also... <clears throat> Capallo, he is definitely a fan favorite. I'm sure a lot of the people from fans of Spawn and Haunt uh, would have probably gone over to get uh, Batman number one just for Capallo's artwork. I definitely did. There was other Batman titles that I could have followed, but I uh, figured, you know what, I want just a straight, strictly Batman title. <clears throat> and which one am I going to follow? I'm going to follow my fan favorite artist, uh, Greg Capallo. So I think probably a lot of the sales probably come from elsewhere, so they drew in other uh, readers, I'm sure, for that one. <clears throat> but the numbers. Here it is. For the month of September, DC beat out Marvel. Let me see. I'll, I'll say DC's numbers first and then Marvel's. DC numbers, their uh, money percentage um, was 35.74. So that was the, the dollar share for the market. The unit share... Um, the DC dominated by 43.04%. Uh, now, here's where the little bit of the shocker is. Marvel, okay, for this month of September, their dollar share was 35.37, and their uh, unit share was 37.88. So, the difference. Um, for the unit share, DC beat out uh, Marvel by 5.16%. <clears throat> More units. But the difference in their dollar value, their, their dollar share, was only 0.37. So, I mean, so, for the month of September, really for, for uh, that business side, getting that cash, cash flow back, uh, DC really didn't beat them out by that much. Hardly any much. I mean, 0.37. Um, so, what does that tell you? First of all, that tells you <coughs> DC having a much higher unit share, but basically the same exact dollar, um, um, you know, in by, you know, same dollar amount in. Obviously, um, a lot of us have been talking about this. I mean, it's kind of a complaint. But Marvel, on average, selling more 
um, their titles for more than, than DC. I mean, DC was doing all this 299, you know, draw the line at 299. But <clears throat> for the dollar market, you know, getting it back really didn't make that much of a difference. DC's overhead had to be so much more, pumping out more units, beating Marvel that way, but their dollar share is more. So, I mean, really, you're, and this is just about the comic book, so really, back at head office, though, I mean, if you think about just the overhead and them pumping out more units, them having to pay printers more, and, and you know, they got more paper, more ink, all that kind of stuff, more titles, more artists, I think just their overhead is going to be a lot more. So back in off, uh, you know, office, back in their own books, um, you know, just looking at these numbers, Marvel would still be beating out, um, uh, probably beat out DC for, you know, money-wise, cash flow. Anyways, there. <clears throat> and again, I'm not trying to drag down DC, but I'm just looking at this, just the, the business side kind of things. Uh, but it was very good that DC actually, uh, you know, came on top a bit. It was really neat. Um, Marvel has been on top for a very long time. And I got some numbers here from from August to show you the differences where why I said that DC beat uh, Marvel but not you know by that much or whatever. Um, <clears throat> so let's let's go through that a little bit. August um, See, the difference in August, here, for August, Marvel was on top, okay, for dollar amount, and the only thing, like a decrease, Marvel had a decrease of money from August to uh, September, they only dropped their profit share by 1.97%. Not much, not much, really. <clears throat> and and uh, they had beat out, in August, they had beat out, Marvel beat out DC for the dollar share by 6.62%. That's quite a bit different than, uh, you know, in, in September, DC beating Marvel only out by 0.37. And for um, the unit share in August, um, Marvel had beat out DC by 7.63%. DC in September beat out uh, Marvel by 5.16. So I don't know. It wasn't probably like I say where the numbers probably shouldn't have been as high as you know. You kind of wanted to to really match and go above and beyond Marvel. DC probably needed to beat the numbers for August. So let's see for those unit shares. Um, the difference in, in the August there, Marvel had dropped from, from August to September their unit share by uh, 4.59 and DC was up 8.2%. So that's pretty good for them, you know, being up that 8% from, from August. Um, but also their dollar share from August to September was an increase of 5.02. Um, so I don't know, that's kind of, <laughs> I don't know, throwing out all those numbers out there, I'm not really a statistics nerd or anything like that, but I just thought it neat um, just to share all those numbers with you guys. Now, September certainly, those numbers for September were important numbers. The ones that are probably going to be even more valuable to DC and to, um, you know, to, to the industry and to, uh, to comic collectors to see how well all the number ones were received. Now, I know probably a lot, I mean, there was 52 number ones. Nobody's going to like all of them, and definitely from watching everybody's reviews and you know, all of these reviews on YouTube, there's tons that they got. They got the number ones, but then it was chop, 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 chop. Tons of them are going to be chopped. That's, that's my prediction. So really, to see how well <coughs> all of these number ones were received, how well September really was, for them, you're gonna have to wait till um, October sales to see the differences, uh, the drops and increases from those to see how well uh, September really was received. I mean, if you see a significant decrease, that's that's gonna tell you right there that you know a lot of what DC put out was crap. Um, but this was a very interesting um, 
tactic for for DC. They uh, you know finally got over um, them as well. Um, I'll tell you too though. <clears throat> in um, August too, the best-selling comic book was uh, uh, JLA. So and of course that was like right at the end of of August and the only you know DC new comic book that they put out there. So anyways, yeah, according to Diamond Comics, August, DC got number one selling comic book, uh, JLA, and September was uh, Batman number one. Yeah, so I don't know if there's anything else I wanted to talk about that. Um, that's pretty much, but I just want to know what your guys' thoughts on it, um, and looking at it, you know, from a, a comic book collector side, but also try looking at it just from um, uh, a business point of view. Um, I still, overall, I think, you know, it's not that big of a difference. It's cool, just those slight little numbers. They beat them over, but I think not as much as they really wanted to, and that their overhead is uh, probably too high for this thing, and, uh, you know, back at office, back in those books there, they're, you know, if you were to compare to Marvel DC, DC is probably still making quite a bit more profit. And with Marvel making, or putting the majority of their titles... Um, costing more. I mean, statistic numbers show that yes, we might complain, but Marvel still ends up beating them out quite a bit by unit share. So that says yes, we are going to complain about that um, um, higher cover price, but that we're still going to buy those books because one, we love those certain characters or whatever, but also that the content is that good that uh, I hate that buying it a little bit more, you know, at a higher price, but that kind of shows you that the quality is is still, um, you know, high for us to to be paying that amount anyways. But we're still going to complain. <laughs> okay, that's that. I'll leave it at that. Please give me your thoughts. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I'm going to wait for October's numbers and, and see what's what. Yeah. Okay. We'll see you guys later. Bye.